you limited by your abilities and not these 2020. Facial recognition, selling coke and dope ain't the business. Nope. Forget trapping and whipping all the business. Yep. Hey. True peace, kids. And it's May 9th, 2020. And I'm back at y'all with another one. So if you're trying to stay ahead of the game, keep the slang. Biometrics forecasts and revenue gains suggest industry weathering challenging market conditions. The top news of the week in biometrics and digital ID is largely divided between positive financial forecasts, results, and announcements, and the technologies being developed to play a role in the global pandemic response, as well as the concerns that raise that they raise. Relatively untested facial recognition technologies that should work in theory and one that raised hackles and doubts across the industry also drew widespread attention. The biometric market is just a third of the way through a 10 year near 60 billion surge past 75 billion seven years from now and total revenues each year according to one of several very upbeat market forecasts that made up the top new article of the week on biometric of course, somewhat less popular was news that the pandemic could cost the industry $2 billion this year. Even that report forecast biometric device sales will be worth more than $28 billion this year anyway. Another of the week's top story covers announcement from eight different biometric providers, with several of them led by FaceFi, decidedly positive. Fingerprint cards reported somewhat mixed results and will be impacted by softness in the smartphone market. But a year over a year, operating activities cash flow improvement of more than 12.5 million should help. Even better news from public companies followed with fundraising customers and revenue gains, stock buybacks and deal rumors reflecting industry largely thriving in difficult conditions. The Allen Turing Institute will carry out at a carry out a research project into how to enhance the security and privacy of national digital IDs. The four-year project is backed by more than five million in funding from the Gates Foundation and is also expected to provide an open library of tools and a pilot with vendor participation. A new industry coalition has been stood up under the Linux Foundation to work on establishing trust over IP. Founding steering members of the TOLP Foundation include Accenture, CU Ledger, Ephronim, IBM Security, MasterCard, and the Canadian province of British Columbia. While contri contri contributing, contributing members include Didx, DIDX, iRespond, Kiva.org, Kiva.org, and the Univers University of Arkansas, among others. There is also a high degree of industry consensus that it is not a good idea to try to predict criminality with facial characteristics. For a number of reasons, biometrics professionals elucidated on learning about just such a system developed in academia. The Times has recontoured reports on the future of authentication, which features an opinion piece from Info Security Magazine editorial director Eleanor Dalloway on the old security versus convenience balance and articles on the pandemic as an industry catalyst, voice biometric passwords and six common myths about biometrics. Progress in Tanzania, SIM's registration program concerned over SIM data mining allegations in Nigeria and an argument for reusing biometric equipment make up some of the top digital ID stories from Africa this week. Fulcrum and expert decision systems are launching an office and a facial recognition offering, respectively in South Africa, a decentralized app providing a self-sovereign take on the immunity passport idea has been developed by a group of South African academic students, entrepreneurs, and privacy advocates. They explain COVID ID in a medium post, which starts from a perspective starting with a comparison many in the Northern Hemisphere are blissfully unaware of, the yellow fever card. Remark Holding is rolling out its new fever detection and facial recognition products and kiosk maker MSP has launched a new offering with hand sanitation compliance among affection provision tools. 
new biometric capabilities and offerings continue to be rolled out to help with pandemic containment and facial occlusion, which has been a barrier to effective facial recognition in the past, seems less so all the time. Results from field deployments and independent testing are yet to roll in, however, and many high security face biometric applications are used in private without masks. Contactless biometrics are expected to play an even larger role in airports as they recover from the virtual shutdown in global air traffic, as the same checks must be carried out at a safe distance. Australian officials are reportedly preparing to invest in vendors like uh, Vision Box and positioning themselves to meet the anticipated demand. Viridium CEO James Stickland writes in a biometric update guest post, that the aviation industry is going to have to take a strategic approach to integrating new technologies to address concerns ranging, uh, ranging from accuracy to data security. The technology already exists to replace many in the actions currently carried out with touch through facial recognition. As Sensible Vision CEO George Brostoff writes in another widely read guest post, while the security vulnerabilities in Zoom have been pointed out by many pundits lately, the privacy risks, such as having your video used to train facial recognition systems without your permission, are also present in Cisco WebEx, Microsoft Teams, and Skype, and Google's Duo. Meet and Hangouts, as Consumer Reports discusses. Consumer Reports concludes with tips for protecting your data and recommendations for video conferencing platforms themselves to follow. The Washington Post reports that as companies rolls out fever detection technology to allow safe returns to work, some health and labor experts are concerned that risky and unproven surveillance techni techniques will become the norm. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission has revised its rules around temperature checks, and the FDA has said it, it has no plans to intervene in the technology's adoption. Even though it is used in the U.S., it's supposed to require its approval after testing. The novel coronavirus has given Gov UK Verify a new lease on life, despite driving hundreds of thousands of applicants from the Internet to call centers. Privacy International says the UK government is still forcing Islam applicants to register their biometrics in person, despite having measures available to avoid forcing them to venture out during the pandemic. Fingerprint card writes that the shift to an agile workforce was already on before the pandemic, but the need for better privacy controls and security has been thrust into the spotlight. Biometrics can help with that in several different ways, according to the company on a similar theme. Pendrop provides some data on how the pandemic has impacted call centers in a blog post and five insights to be drawn from the way customers' engagement and fraud have played out. Even under present circumstances, fingerprints remain the best way to authenticate people in most situations. HID Global Senior Director of Product Marketing for Citizen Identification Steve Warren argues in a blog post, he makes the point that society is unlikely to either retrofit or stop using all public doors among several in support of the conclusion that contact biometrics will continue to have a place at the foundation of identity programs. A highlight to watch out for the next week is the continuation okay, of the biometrics fallout, which has the feature in the Experian knock-knock, last pin drop, and behave sick.